Yes, you can start. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good morning. I am Christine, and I belong to the Emerging Device and System Group from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Today, I'll be presenting to you my work, which is on the compact modeling of current assisted photonic demodulator or CAPD for a time of flight CMOS image sensor. Now, the main idea of this work is to basically develop a model or a compact, a model or a tool that will facilitate the design and simulation of a pixel that is capable of capturing 3D images. Because after all, as humans, we perceive the world not just based on color, but also based on depth or by how far objects are from our given vision. So you can imagine if cameras could only see depth, there are several applications that can greatly benefit from it, such as autonomous navigation, industry assembly, gestural control interface for human machine interaction and ambient assisted living. So all of these applications support the conduct of life. But the question is, how can a camera capture distance? So one technique to allow cameras to capture depth is called time of flight. So time of flight works by sending a modulated light source in a given scene. And based on the delay of arrival of this light source to the sensor, we can then estimate this distance information. So essentially the time of flight camera is composed of a light source and a sensor. So this sensor is capable of extracting the phase information or phase delay between the radiated and the reflected IR signal. So on a device perspective, we can extract this phase information using a device called Photonic Mixer Device or PMD. So the PMD works both as a detector and as a demodulator. So the demodulation process happens in a charge domain scheme wherein we basically mix the optical signal with the four-phase electrical control signal. Now depending on the amount of charges that are actually stored in the in pixel charge storages, we can then estimate this phase delay. So this is what we call a four bucket sampling technique. So one wildly popular implementation for a photonic mixer device is called a current assisted photonic demodulator CAPD. So we can see here that the CAPD has two guide electrodes and two detector electrodes. So this is a very simple approach because we essentially introduce the control through ohmic contacts. And because we introduce an electric field on the optical window, charges are now transferred through this. And with that, we can achieve a high demodulation contrast. And with this configuration, it is possible to, de to design the sensor with a larger sensing area. Therefore, we can increase the sensitivity of the given pixel. Now, the problem is that even though CAPD is being used for existing time of flight applications, its output characteristics are still difficult to predict. Why is that? Because there is no model or there are no tools to correlate its structure and biasing information to its IV characteristics. That's why it is difficult to predict both both its static and dynamic behavior. So with this problem, we basically developed the first compact model for CAPD. And to do that, we first analyze or understand what is its carrier transport mechanism. So to visualize the motion of carriers, so we extracted the energy band diagram at this given cut line here. So the most basic operation is when no guide bias difference is applied. So we can expect that when no guide bias difference is applied, basically photo generated electrons will just move towards the detector nodes mainly by diffusion or random movement but we want to be able to control the motion of these carriers so if we're going to apply a potential difference over the guide electrodes such that vga is greater than vgb an electric field or drift component is actually introduced along the window so this will then facilitate the electrons to move towards guide a and eventually be collected at the detector a terminal whereas the photo generated holes are redirected towards guide B. So the opposite is true when VGB is greater than VGA. So now that we know this carrier transport mechanism, basically the next step is to define how the carrier distribution is influenced by the electric field. So to solve this problem, we simplify first the structure into just one dimensional structure, or we just um, approximate the active region of the given device to be just the surface of the CAPD. So under such condition, we can then say that the motion of carriers is mainly one dimensional. So by solving the drift diffusion and continuity equation along the optical window, we can then extract the distribution of the minority carriers as follows. But in order to solve those two equations a while ago, there should be appropriate boundary conditions to be applied. Now, these boundary conditions are set based on the 
based on the property of a reverse bias p injunction because typically for uh, static or for normal static characterizations these two p injunctions here are set at reverse bias condition that means that the concentration at this depletion edges are basically zero and since this p plus regions or this ohmic contacts are basically designed with the minimum dimension permitted by the technology whatever the concentration at the edges of the depletion will be the same as the concentration at the edges of the optical window which is essentially zero so now that we know this minority carrier concentration, concentration, we can then derive the output photogenerated current of the given device. So this is determined by simply counting the number of electrons that actually diffuse, diffuse at these edges and are swept by the electric field at these two junctions. So now that we know the relationship between the current and the voltage, so the next step is to basically verify whether the model is correct or not. So we do this into uh, we do this in two general cases. One wherein we have a short and long CAPD case. So basically, short and long depends whether the optical window is shorter or longer than the diffusion length of electrons. So we can see here that both the concentration of electrons as well as in the IV characteristics, the model was able to capture that of the simulation results. But this is a simplified case. So this is just a 1D model verification. If you look at the actual uh, structure of the given device, it's not just 1D. It is actually, uh, there's actually a considerable substrate thickness for the given device. So we usually use a thicker substrate because we want to be able to extract most of the incoming photons. And obviously, if we're going to use the 1D model to capture the response of this 2D device, it's not going to be enough. That's why there is a discrepancy in this given model, in this given prediction. But we where does this discrepancy come from? So it comes from the recombination happening on the substrate of the given device. So to account this um, phenomenon, we introduce a 2D extension in the form of a net generation factor beta. So once the illumination wavelength is set, so we will know the absorption coefficient of that wavelength to the given material. And knowing the substrate thickness, we can then derive this net generation factor. So this net generation factor basically tells us the non-uniform photogeneration rate happening on the given substrate. So by using this extension, we now have a better matching between the model and the simulation. But you see, simulation is not enough. We still need to verify the model with experimental results. So using two um, fabricated structures available from literature, we use the 1D model to predict them. Now, there is a discrepancy, of course, because we haven't accounted the Net, the, the recombination happening on the substrate. And another thing that we have observed is that the lateral dimension or the layout of the CAPD also matters because typically the guide and the width, uh, the guide and the detector width um, are actually different when they design them. So that means that there's also going to be non-uniformity on the spreading of the electric field along the substrate. So that's why we incorporated a 3D instead. 3D extension in a form of a spreading factor eta. So this spreading factor will basically account the differences in the guide electrodes, and they are dependent on the ratio between the between the widths of these electrodes. So with that, we now have a better matching between the model and that of the experimental results. So that is for the static characteristics. How about for the dynamic behavior of the given device? So to determine the dynamic behavior of the given device, we simply need to determine how the charges are going to be partitioned in the given detector nodes. So to study the transient and frequency response of the given device, so this is the overall charges available in the window. And if we're going to assume that there is a linear grading of these charges on the window, we can partition these charges as QA and QB. But what does this QA and QB refer to? So they will correspond to a capacitive current that will account the delay in the charge transfer of electrons. So now that we know both the static and dynamic characteristics of the given device, we should now um, be able to demonstrate the functionality of the model by simulating a complete time of flight pixel. So this is the time of flight pixel that we have simulated. So this is the equivalent circuit model for CAPD accounting both the static and the dynamic behavior I have mentioned a while ago. So you can see here that half of a time of flight pixel is actually analogous to that of an active pixel sensor circuit or APS sensor circuit for a CMOS image sensor, which is composed of a reset transistor, source follower, and a select transistor. So to understand the operation of this given um, circuit, 
I have here a conceptual timing diagram. So basically the operation starts when a reset signal is basically sent on the given circuit. So as such, we're actually defining the detector voltages to float at a value almost equivalent to the supply voltage. So once the, modulate, the, the modulation process happens, we're basically mixing this received optical signal with the modulation voltages applied on, applied on the guide electrodes. So because of this uh, electro-optical mixing, charges are going to be collected or accumulated at the detector nodes. So because of that, basically the vo detector voltages are going to drop. Now, since most of the charges are going to be collected at detector B, so we can see here that there is a faster voltage drop on B compared to that on A. So this voltage drop are going to be read through the output column lines when, when the select signal is basically sent. So this entire process actually cor com uh, is correspond to a microframe. So a microframe is composed of a reset stage, integration, and readout. And we're going to do this four times, 0, 90, 180, and 270 degrees relative to the send optical signal in order to resolve the phase information. So with this um, property or with this understanding, so we can now um, verify whether um, the, our transient simulation is uh, is actually working or not. So in this given case here, since the voltage drop is uh, greater than in A compared to that in B, so we're uh, intuitively, we know that most of the charges are actually collected at A compared to that in B. So this is the measurement setup for this given transient response. So we use a 0.18 micrometer technology with one microframe period set at 30 milliseconds. So it is at video frame rate. And with that, we can capture around seven death frames per second. And we use a modulation frequency of 10 megahertz. So with that, we were able to demonstrate the functionality of our compact model. So as a conclusion, we've seen that the distribution of the photogenerated minority carriers actually played an important role in deriving the IV characteristics of the given device. So by incorporating as well its geometry, we were able to match the model with a 3D CAPD structures that are uh, with CAPD structures that are fabricated in existing literatures. And finally, we were able to demonstrate the functionality of our compact model by simulating the dynamics of the electro-optical mixing. That's all. Um, thank you.